one. The keepers have decided to name this cub Bala. Each day, Bala comes to the health center in the morning, and she gets multiple therapy sessions to build up the muscles in her legs. At the end of the day, she goes home to mom, and then she comes back to us the next day. Uh, all right. I made a mess. Let's just see her walking a little bit, if we could. We have hobbles on Bala's legs, and that's really just bandaging that keeps her legs closer to each other so that they don't slide out to the side. And that teaches her muscles exactly where her feet need to be. Come on. There she goes. I think she's looking a lot better. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing is when she's walking, she's at least getting her toes sometimes to point forward. Mm -hmm. Her other hobbles have helped to pull the toes in a little bit tighter. Uh -huh. Bala's always been a little bit more feisty than some of our other snow leopards. Pillow. Uh -huh. And as she grows, that continues to be uh, one of her characteristics. Yes, distractor. <laughs> When she gets bigger, it will be a little less cute, and it will be a little more difficult to work with her. Hello. Won't eat Auntie Jessica's hair. Hi. Who's that? What do you think? A lot of sniffing and some aloofness. <laughs> Good. That's good smells. Animals communicate in a world of all of their senses so much more than people do. They're talking by smelling. Smelling is good information. I know, she's your friend. You want the animals to be in as natural a situation as possible when they're in the very unnatural situation of being away from their mom. Over the next few weeks, we will be encouraging the fawns to eat solid food, and then they will be introduced to the herd. Every morning we check our bison, and this morning a keeper found a baby bison in the corral with the herd. I just feel a very proud moment right now. This is just... A lot of hoofstock give birth to their calves overnight, and by morning, the calves are like up and moving. Bison. Yeah, baby. baby. Aside from the cuteness, it's also a very, very nice feeling. It's a new purebred bison in the world. Good girl. Barbara Gordon is a baby vet. We just found her one morning last year on the ground in the bat exhibit. We were not able to identify her mother, so we took her to our wildlife health center to be hand reared. That's better. <laughs> Once she was a little more self-sufficient, she came back here to our pergola area. She got to know the bats that were in here. We spent a lot of time working with her. Barbara Gordon Flight School. Come on. Oh. Yay! Yay. Yay. <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. Come on. I know. And we're getting ready for her next step, which is going to be to be on exhibit. <laughs> She's gotten feisty. There you go. Silly Barbara. All right, you ready? You know what we're doing. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Just coming in for one second. I've always loved bats. I love working with the bats. People picture scary bats from horror movies that fly after you and want to bite your neck. I don't think people realize that there are bats that eat fruit. They even like flowers. Sometimes we bring them to Barbara because she really likes them. There you go, good girl. the nest. I'm just going to try to pull this up. That's where I think it is. We're being very careful about how we look for the pup. 
We don't know if there's more than one, so we have to just take our time and kind of go through carefully and see what we find. Yeah. Yes. Yep. There. Hi, honey. Here we are. Eyes are not open yet. Does it feel cold? Should no. They? Feels warm. I have to have them check to see if it. See first. See if the belly looks distended. Luckily, the pup looks great. Belly looks like. Him. It's hard to say, no, in, no obvious injuries. No signs of trauma. All the signs are good at this point. All right, I'll make sure this is like a little nest for you. We're going to take the pup to the health center to have the vets evaluate it. We'll confirm its sex and set it up in an incubator. Aww. So cute. We've been trying to have Atlantic pup and chicks for the last eight years. So it was, it's very exciting that this is our first chick. Uh, the puff and chick is currently living in an incubator in our incubation room. So we made impromptu burrow out of some towels, and it seems quite happy in there. Like a good puff and staying in the burrow. Mm -hmm. All right, little bud. Let's see how much you weigh. 53.8. There are really only a few zoos in the United States right now working with Atlantic puffins. So because hatches are rare, we've really chosen to hand rear these chicks to be able to monitor that development very carefully and maximize the opportunity of successful breeding. I never get tired of new life. Um, that's one of the exciting things about what we get to do. Here's my food, bud. Are you ready? I gotta make your food. You can go back in there. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> it's a puffin with a New York attitude. Hi, kids. Hi, guys. How you guys doing? Good to see you guys again. Look at you guys. Good growing fast. They're so alert. Once the puma cubs get to the queen zoo, they'll be under my care and responsibility. So it's time for me to familiarize myself with them and have them become used to seeing me around all the time. Oh my goodness! Hi, okay. Girl. Hi. So they're still so they're still a little standoffish mm -hmm. when you come in, but um... everything's so new to them, especially seeing me again. I have only met me once. Hi, big guy. It's hard. Hi. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We're gonna have a great time together once you get over to Queens. We're gonna have a great time. They're on just meat now, so they're not oh, really? getting any That's they're great. not getting milk anymore. Oh great. And how they've been doing with eating? I mean, you've just been separating them and they've yeah, been doing fine. They still try to go between, you know, each other's mm -hmm. bowls, but they're finishing a lot of their food. Why are you so nervous? <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, she's a big old bad poop. <laughs> probably intimidating to see someone of my stature walk in here. That's why I went on my knees and to see what happens. Maybe they become more, a little more comfortable. I'm super excited to have uh, the opportunity to work with such young animals. It's a rare opportunity to develop a great bond and a relationship, which is gonna make it easier for us to care for, for the cubs. They'll, they'll get to know me. We've been watching them over the last three weeks on the camera, so it's really exciting to feel them and see how fluffy they really are. Oh, baby. Oh, he musked on me. Oh, that's a fun added bonus. Musking is a defense mechanism where they'd secrete a substance that smells really bad, so it would get a predator to run away from them. This guy's real calm. When they're born, red panda cubs are this really light, almost like silvery gray color. And then as they get older, they'll get darker and then they'll turn almost orangey brown. And eventually, when they're full grown, they'll have that red color. What do you think we got here? Awesome. Yeah. Right, we got one boy. Yeah. You're a good girl. During the exam, we'll be monitoring Willow's behavior very closely to make sure that she's not getting too stressed while we have her separated. It's all right, pretty girl. First one. Boy is 440. Let's kill the other one. Boy as well? Yep. All right, two, two boys. boys. That's a good girl. You're OK, Bubba. All right, she's starting to get anxious. We're, we're putting we're them back. Putting Come here. Letting her over. 
Here she comes. Good girl, Mom. You check on them babies. Good mama. So, we'll okay. all. All right, everybody out? Yeah. Everybody out. The cubs won't come out of the box for a couple months, and then we'll give them a couple weeks after that before we even let them outside. 